This is Twit. I mean, you guys, you know, you take apart a lot of different types of products. This seems to be pretty different from a lot of the other devices uh, that you've pulled apart. Uh, what What's so different under the hood? What What are some of the kind of different changes that Samsung made here to allow for this kind of foldable design? Yeah, it is different. I mean, well, I mean, yes and no. Uh, a lot of what we found was actually pretty standard, you know, smartphone, Galaxy parts, Um but, uh, you know, the batteries, the circuit boards, the cameras, those kinds of things looked pretty, pretty standard. The, I think for, for me, there were two big things that stood out. One is obviously that, that flexible OLED panel, um, which is just really interesting to see in person. Um, and then the hinge system is just fascinating because mechanical moving parts in particular just isn't something that we see much on smartphones. Um, you know, you might have a couple of mechanical buttons uh, and a vibrator motor, which which you never see because it's buried inside the phone. But mechanical parts are a big potential point of failure. Uh, and we've seen manufacturers trying to eliminate those. Um, Apple, for example, switched to a, a solid state home button uh, that doesn't physically click. Their, their track pads don't physically click anymore, although they're very good at fooling you into thinking that they do. Um, and so this huge hinge system is is a big move away from, from that trend. Um, and then obviously the OLED panel, the flexible panel is is very interesting. Uh, just the fact that it's soft and it folds is something we're not used to. Um, smartphones, you know, they're all covered in Gorilla Glass and they're, and they're virtually scratch proof now. So this was something different. Can you understand why some reviewers uh, took a look at this and, and started peeling off that plastic layer? Like, I mean, you actually had to kind of peel off some of these layers because that's part of breaking it apart. But um, as you were doing so, did it, did it kind of make sense why people might think that that's removable and do you envision other people like regular people thinking the same thing absolutely a hundred percent and and you know just thinking back to the most recent samsung teardown that we did prior to this was the galaxy s10 and the s10e all of you know all of those s10 phones shipped with a screen protector right from the factory um when we were setting up for our teardown one of the very first things i did was rip that off because it was gathering up dust and looking ugly in photos and I thought, oh, this looks terrible i gotta get rid of this um the galaxy fold looks like the same thing it looks like it's got this thin little screen protector that would just be so easy to slide a, a fingernail under there and pull it off i don't blame anybody for for having done that it seems like an obvious thing to try hmm. So the phone is not coming out on Friday as as planned. Um, was there yeah. anything uh, inside that you could think that could be fixed so that it would come out at all? Or do you think that this is sort of um, a lost cause in general? Um, it's a fascinating question. Uh, it, so close to launch, I have to assume they had tens, if, if not hundreds of thousands of these manufactured and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly can't imagine they'll be able to physically alter the hardware uh, in in the kind of time frame that you know that people are probably hoping for you know next month or June or whatever. Um, maybe they'll find a way to stick a bandaid on it uh, or include more warnings about you know what not to do and how careful you have to be. Um, I, I could also frankly see them just like you said canceling or postponing it indefinitely while they while they sort it out. I mean, it's really it's a really difficult spot for Samsung to be in, right? Like brand new kind of device category, so supposedly paving the way for this new future of foldable devices. And this being the shining example, Samsung would be the company to do it and to do it right. But I mean, right out of the gate before it's ever released, all this stuff happening. One of the big reasons, of course, is that particles seem to be able to get in underneath the display. So even with the hinge system and kind of the, the plastic trim that surrounds the display right at the point of the hinge, the plastic can't quite go there because the plastic is not bendy, right? It needs to have that that room for things to bend. And when you do that, there's that point of ingress. There's that small, you know, slightly open hole that who knows if you're keeping this in your pocket, you're going to have pocket lint fly in there at some point. It's a really big risk for Samsung. That right there, that hinge that you kind of see, that seems like one of the bigger problems here is that how do you even fix that? I don't even know. And that's going to be the ch the challenge that Samsung's uh, going to run into. Is, is that what kind of struck you guys in, in taking a look at that? Like, I don't even know where we go, go with this. Yeah, I think we agree. I, there's been a lot of folks who have suggested that that, you know, that gap at the bottom of the screen should be sealed with, uh, you know, some sort of mesh or something. I, I can't help but feel like if it were easy to do that, why, why wouldn't they have done it already? Yeah. I, can, I can't right. imagine that um, that that didn't occur to them. Um, 
You know, so it, it's easy to be a critic and say, oh, this is a dumb design. But I mean, at the end of the day, Samsung has some very talented engineers. I have to assume that they they did their best. And it just kind of seems like this thing just went to market before it was ready and before all the problems could be could be solved.